Step 3. Single photons. So let's introduce a toy model of a single photon state. Why this is a toy model, we will explain at the end of this step. But for now, we're just going to consider again our uh, Hamiltonian for a single mode electric field, given by this expression, where the creation operators follow the usual commutation relations. And we know that by solving the time independent Schrodinger equation, given by this expression right here, we can find the eigenenergies and the eigenvectors uh, following these expressions and these properties. The energies are given here, the n's can be only 0, 1, 2, the number states are or form an orthogonal basis, and the number operator operating on a number state just returns the uh, n associated with the number state, so the number of photons in the field in that particular mode. And we saw in the previous step the properties of vacuum, in other words, when n equals to zero. So it makes sense that in this step we investigate similar properties, but for a field that's prepared in the one photon state, where n equals one. So again, we ask the same question. What are the fluctuations of a one photon state? We begin by computing the average of the electric field, written here. And again, we can see that applying A to 1, we get a 0, in other words, the vacuum, which is orthogonal to the one photon state. So the first term disappears. A dagger on the hand uh, brings our state from, one, uh, from a single photon to two photons, which is an orthogonal state with the single photon here. Therefore, their inner product vanishes. And we see that the average of the electric field even when we have one photon in the, in, in the field, is zero. But as we saw, just having the average equal to zero doesn't mean that the field is empty or there aren't any fluctuations. So let's compute the second moment of the electric field, given by E squared. And here we will see a deviation from our previous calculations. Again, when we square the E, we get the same expression as we saw before, but to remind you, I, we are taking the average with respect to the one photon state, ket1. Again, a squared disappears, a dagger squared disappears. But this time, this term, a dagger a, does not disappear. Previously it vanished if, because we were applying it to the vacuum state. Now we are applying it to ket1, the single photon state. So we obtain the following expression. We've got the average of a times a dagger plus a dagger a. Again, we follow the same procedure and we write all of the operators in normal ordering, meaning the daggers appear on the left and the non-daggers, the, the annihilation operators, appear on the right. This term is already normally ordered, this one is not. So we apply the commutation relations to this term. And when we do that, we see that we will have contributions from three parts. So the total fluctuation in the field, the total variance of the field is given by three times the square of the one photon amplitude. To remind you for vacuum, we didn't have this factor of three. And immediately we see that if we uh, compute the fluctuations for the position quadrature, delta Q, and the fluctuations for the momentum quadrature, delta P, we get that they are equal to three times h bar over two, meaning the one photon state is not a minimum uncertainty state. Now, at the beginning of this step, we said that we are considering only a toy model. So keep this in mind, that a single mode of radiation describes continuous traveling wave, meaning that this wave does not have a beginning and does not have an end. This is clearly an unphysical model for a single photon, which, as we said, is produced by spontaneous emission. In other words, when we prepare the atom in the excited state, we must wait some time until the atom de-excites, ejecting, emitting one photon of radiation. So there's a clear beginning to our one photon state of the field, and there's an end when we detect the photon. So, the one photon state is not a continuous wave. It is a wave packet of finite extent. And we know from our lesson on Fourier analysis that such a state cannot be produced with a single frequency. 
we must have a spread of frequency that we all add together, we all add their amplitudes in order to produce this such a wave packet. So, in order to have a realistic description of a single photon, we must include many modes of the radiation. However, for now, we're going to content ourselves with just this toy model, just to demonstrate how we can manipulate a single mode of radiation. And later in this module, we will become more realistic in our description and introduce the notion of a realistic single photon state using multiple modes of radiation. And we're done with single photons. In the next step, we are going to consider how to detect photons. See you there.